Hello Libra friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Libra June 2021 Astrology Must Knows. June is one of the most astrologically active months of the whole year and I've got a wonderful series of must knows planned for you so that you can make the most of this month, know the energies that are coming ahead of time so that you can prepare. I've got a slideshow I'm calling Quad Boom because we've got a quadruple boom this month and I'm going to go into details about the 10 must knows for those factors. But first we're going to go into some things specific for Libra. Now, two admin notes to help you make the most of this video. This video is for you, not just if your sun is in Libra, but also if your moon or your rising or any other planets that you watch those charts for. Some people like to go super deep and you can do that. And I always encourage you to go past your sun sign. You can run a free birth chart online and look at some of these different dimensions and you know, start to watch different uh, layers of your total astrological picture. The second thing is if you're a late Libra placement, so around October 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees, if you're watching for one of those other placements, then I suggest you also watch my Scorpio reports. And this is true for any astrologers that you watch. If you're cuspy there, your complex, your read is more complex. So you're, you'll pick up pieces from um, my October reading, I mean my uh, Libra reading and also my Scorpio reading, okay? And you can experiment with doing that for other astrologers too, but it will depend on what degrees they use for their charts, but it's definitely worth the experiment to see if you can pick up some pieces there too. Okay, so let's talk about the factors that are specifically affecting Libra. We've got a continuation of this Gemini party, and this is very exciting. We always look for these astro kisses as I call them. Astro kisses are when the planets are making sweet aspects with our placements, and this tends to bring more harmony, more flow, opportunities, it can light up creativity, it can bring all kinds of kisses, and some of those kisses are coming from the sun, Mercury, still have a little from Venus, we're going to have kisses from the eclipse, and that, both eclipses actually. So. Um, it's really a big time for you. Now, what this also can do, even though these are very favorable transits, you're definitely going to feel overwhelmed. This is a very overwhelming month because it's so busy, but also all the Gemini transits are like, they spin, they spin people. They make people go all over the place, mentally, emotionally, physically. So the odds are that you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, even if it's just local, like driving places locally, um, hopefully it also means travel is opening up. It will depend on what's going on in the world at that time. And it will depend on your particular location. But everything is definitely set up for everybody to have more movement and especially Libras because as the Gemini planets light up the ninth house and the eclipses are in Sagittarius and Gemini, these are the two travel signs. So not only are your travels, the travel signs being lit up for every zodiac sign, the travel houses are being lit up for Libra. Okay, so that could involve, like I said, long distance trips, it could be international trips, or it can just be international business connections, or you're doing something on the internet that's going out to an international audience. It can have something to do with writing. A lot of writing is coming up for Libras because of what I just explained. You guys have double of what's going on and Gemini and Sagittarius are the writing planet or signs as well. Writing, speaking, publishing, anything having to do with blogs, um, traveling for blogs, travel blogs, things like that are all really lit up. And education, teaching and learning. If you are wanting to learn something to either enhance your um, your current employment or to get into a different line of work or start a new business, this is an amazing time for finding perfect education or going deeper into education you've started. Or if you're wanting to get into teaching, this is also an amazing time for that to move along those spectrums. Things with immigration and things with, um, you know, anything having to do with um, international things like that are coming up in a big, big way. Now, as the planets move, start, to move, start moving into Cancer, the energies are going to get even more emotional. This is definitely going to be an emotional month, even though we have these intellectual air energies kind of offsetting some of it, because eclipse time is always emotional, because there are big endings and major beginnings, and 
those beginnings for you all are, are going to be centered around a lot of the things that I just listed because the eclipse is going to be in the ninth house from the whole house perspective for Libras. Now, if you are a Libra that is um, like, say, October 5th through the rest of the sign, I also suggest that you look at my resources for eclipses in uh, Scorpio because that's going to be set back for you. So basically I've got an eclipse playlist I've created so that I can keep these videos shorter and still give you all of the layers of information that I think are important for you. So for all Libras, I suggest you watch my Eclipses in Gemini video. You can find this in a playlist on my homepage, Annie Botticelli on YouTube, or you can search organically Annie Botticelli Eclipses in Gemini. All Libras, I suggest you also watch Eclipses in Sagittarius, and that information is going to be times two, because in June, we're still being affected by the May eclipse that was in Sagittarius. And like I said, it's happening in the house of Sag for you guys. So you guys are getting a double focus there. Now, the October 5th or so and on, or like 15 degrees through the rest of the sign, I also suggest that you watch my Eclipses in Scorpio um, video because in the Placidus chart, people in that later spectrum are going to have the eclipse either in or near that eighth house. Okay, things shift back in the um, Placidus chart the later you are in the sign. So that's going to pick up some, some more goodies for you there. And that has to do with business and money and your deep relationships, intimate relationships and mysteries and deep study and esoteric studies um, are all in there. And you can see more in the Eclipses in Scorpio video. I'll go into all of the details of each of the eclipses for the signs that I've seen manifest over the 20 years that I've been watching them move along. Okay, so those are very in-depth. All right, so let's see. Um, now, Jupiter is going retrograde. I'll talk about that a little bit more later as well. But one of the things that this might do is slow some growth or development down in the area that it was highlighting, which is your um, children, creativity, creative projects, things having to do with being out in front of people, hobbies, your bucket list. You might have had a very big growth spurt as far as anything in those areas and Jupiter moving into retrograde might start to slow things down. This doesn't have to be a bad thing, especially if you know what's going on. It could just be that you've been on full throttle in some of those areas and that it's time to kick back and relax a little bit. Um, this also can energetically be coinciding with like the end of a school year and having things be more relaxed there, you know, that type of thing. Um, but if you're working on something in that area, like you're trying to have a baby or you're trying to do something to help one of your kids or you have a creative baby that you're trying to birth and things slow down, don't worry about it. What Jupiter's doing is it's helping you to pull in extraneous um, places where you've over, over um, committed and to rein in, to prioritize focusing on the necessary steps for making your big dreams a reality, okay? So it's just a temporary step back and it definitely can help you to expand more in the future. It's like kind of a taking in an assessment before you move forward. I have a video that I created called Jupiter in Aquarius for Libra. And you can search for that organically with, for Annie Botticelli, um, Jupiter and Aquarius for Libra, or you can look at my homepage also. I've got the Jupiter playlist there for all of the signs, and that will tell you um, lots of details about the storyline, including you know, when you're getting your big kisses from, each of you will get your big kisses from Jupiter, because even though Jupiter is ducking temporarily into Pisces, the predominance of this time, Jupiter is being spent in a fellow air sign. So all this stuff we've been talking about with the eclipses and the Gemini movements, you've also been having those kisses from Saturn and Jupiter, and you can see more about that in that video. Okay, so if you want to have a write-up of the most notable dates and aspects of each month, what those aspects might bring, what the sweet and salty dates are, when you can expect drama and stress or a wonderful flow, plus a general write-up of the month delivered into your inbox one month early, I highly recommend you sign up for my free email newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com. You also get other goodies there and you can click in the notes underneath this video to see all of the other free resources that I have. And there are quite a lot of resources I create each month, including free courses and um, 
other things there that you can see. Okay, so now let's talk more about this quad boom. What the heck am I talking about here? And what are the 10 must knows about these four factors that are making this month one of the most astrologically active in the whole year? Okay, so let's get deeper into the astrology of June 2021 by talking about 10 must knows that are influenced from this quadruple boom. Mercury retrograde in Gemini, solar eclipse in Gemini, Saturn square Uranus, and Jupiter in retrograde. When Mercury is in retrograde, plans and things that other things that seem certain will be cast into uncertainty or tested. This is just something that we see every Mercury retrograde season. And this season basically started May 15th when we entered the shadow period of Mercury retrograde. The actual retrograde is May 29th through June 22nd. And the post shadow period runs until July 7th. So during this time, the biggest must know is to be flexible and go with the flow. This can be an amazing time for things to gel in wonderful ways, but when we try to force things or try to hold too tight to an old framework, it definitely causes complications and stress. You've got to double check and check plans. Miscommunications could abound, so you have to be more careful with your words and careful with everything that you do. There is going to be a drive to distractedness, so just keeping awareness can help offset many issues. It's easier to not try to plan things for this time, but if you have to, just know that those plans may be called into question or they might change. And the same goes for agreements. Anything that you agree to now is likely to change, so just try to keep that flexibility in those arrangements. Okay, so on the topic of the eclipse, we've got quite a few must-knows here. The dramatic eclipse news is going to continue. You likely have seen this starting in April and May, and we have it continued here in June. So these eclipses bring surprise trajectory shifts, powerful endings, and exciting new beginnings. So in the month of June, we'll be feeling the effects still of the eclipse from May and this June 10th eclipse at almost 20 degrees of Gemini. So a big must know for this time is to go in with a willingness to let go of what's leaving and to be excited about what new energies will be coming in to fill that space. Okay, so another must know is that the eclipses are connected to the north and south node placements which are linked to our karma and dharma. So the must know here is to know that your routine and the whole matrix and framework of your life patterns are likely going to radically change. You'll have major karma melting off, which will reveal new opportunities that couldn't have been imagined before. So that's something very exciting about eclipse time. You can see the fulfillment of life dreams and the gifts and blocks that you um, were born into can be enhanced or broken through at this time. So you can step into gifts that you were born with and you can burn off blocks that you were born with as well as this call to your highest destiny gets very loud and the heaviness of karmic storylines can start to melt away. Another must know about the eclipses is that it's very important to dare to dream and dare to believe that things can really change while at the same time being willing and vigilant looking for ways you can take an active role in creating those changes from the inside out. We are greeted by our unconscious belief systems very strongly at eclipse times. So fears and things that we've been holding on to may come to our faces, come up to our faces to get challenged. And the more we make the decision to break through, the more we can open up for our new experiences. Okay, so since eclipse season coincides with Mercury retrograde now, there are going to be key people and key situations and key projects from the past that are reemerging as very relevant. 
So the must know here is that there, if there's someone you've been waiting to connect with or hoping to connect with or thinking about connecting with or someone who's contacted you from the past or something else that's come up from the past, give those things from the past extra focus at this time because it could be destiny knocking. And people and places even, going back to old places you've been, can hold keys to your highest purpose and can also hold keys to closing up old stories and being able to step out of old patterns. Okay, so another must know here is that new information can seem to come in daily. This is why the combination of the eclipse time and the combination of the retrograde time put us into this spider situation that I often talk about where the spider has made its web during the more active times and now in the eclipse and retrograde time you just sort of wait and watch to see what shows up in your web rather than actively trying to make more webs or um, you know do anything other than sort of watch observe take in you are going to have time coming soon to really have the clarity about what to do with the things that come in, but that time won't come until after July 7th. So basically July 8th through September 7th, this is a major must know. June is not the time when you're likely going to have clarity because more information is coming in sometimes every day. Okay, so July 8th through September 7th is the next window for forging forward and having more clarity about um, what you're going to do with the decisions you know that have come before you. And if you have to make an agreement or an arrangement in June, try for bridge or temporary arrangements that give you a little bit of time for the fog to clear from these aspects before you make the more permanent, um, permanent decisions or permanent plans or agreements. Okay, so Saturn and Uranus square, this is the uh, second of three passes. We had the first in February, the second one is in June, and then we have the third one in December. Um, this is a very powerful transit that is affecting us on the major world global levels down to the individual levels, you know, weather and earth changes and political changes and changes to our systems and our structures and every aspect of our lives down from, you know, the global down to the individual, um, you know, is being affected by these outer aspects. So I've actually done a, a whole separate video on this, which you can search for if you just search for Saturn Square Uranus video, YouTube, Annie Botticelli, it will come up and I'll go into lots more details there. But basically, this is a clash of the subjective definitions of freedom and accountability on the individual community world levels. So big must know here is to ask the questions about your life that will bring you more joy and personal freedom. Ask the question, what does freedom mean to you and how can you have more of it? And how can you be more accountable for your life and your, your circumstances? Big question here, are you willing to own your creations as coming from the inside rather than something just happening to you? And this is, you know, this is the time where our perceptual framework can really change how we see ourselves. And we've got amazing possibilities for stepping out of the experience of victimhood, which means that we feel like something is happening to us. And we step into empowerment, knowing that regardless of circumstances, we can shift our life's experience. Okay. So Saturn, Uranus, square, big times, and we've got hot spots in like the six-ish weeks before and after these clashes. So that that's basically covered, you know, most of the year so far. And then we have a little bit of, you know, kind of um, wearing off of the energies in between each hit of February, June, and December, but it's still active and present as a long-term theme. Okay, so this Saturn Uranus is going on the whole year. Okay, so then we've got Jupiter retrograde. Jupiter goes retrograde for about four months every year. We've got it retrograde here from June 20th through October 17th. This is a time when big plans, big ideals, big dreams, expansion moves more to the backdrop. 
backdrop in many cases where it's not as out there and it's more closer in and certain things may seem like they're um, slowing down or they're wearing off or, you know, things that you've been trying to work on could start losing steam. But just know that they're not necessarily, they're just going into the backdrop to be worked on and you can continue the forward movement. It just might not be as obvious in the outer planes and that this is a time to fine tune your um, organization and tend to the necessary details that are um, the core of your big dreams. So basically, if you've overextended yourself, this is a time when you pull back in and you see what things are absolutely necessary, get down to the bare bones so that you can really put all of your power behind the things that are going to make your dreams a reality. And some people might actually see um, past efforts that were done flowing and manifesting with magical ease where you're barely having to do anything and things are showing up. Okay, so the last thing is a bonus here. So besides our quad boom, we've got all of these outer planets in Aquarius and Uranus and Taurus. It's bringing up the topic of pollution and toxins and disease, the issues and the solutions. Um, Aquarius rules the uh, lymphatics of our body and Taurus is definitely related to our food supply and agriculture, which is directly related, you know, affected by the droughts and the storms and the toxins. So the big must know here is cleaning up our diets and lifestyle are going to protect as issues with toxins and disease stay front and center for a long time to come. So that's again, you know, something empowering that we can do is keep our vibrant health up that will make us less susceptible to disease and to, you know, support our body systems to clear out the toxins. Um, you know, be, be nice to your liver, clear out your, um, your body because there's always this direct interface between our physicality and the stars. And so the stars have these aspects and they send us messages and they create situations that bring things into the forefront. So the importance of us cleaning up our personal space is shown by this, you know, microcosmic or, um, this micro, um, you know, this situation basically where the inside is outside and the outside is inside. So when we're looking at the environment being a reflection of our inner environment, sometimes we can't control everything outside of ourselves, but we can make different decisions for our inner climate and our inner environment.